Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side at 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. If you have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. 844-236-6010. 6010 is our number. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, heart disease, statin drugs, cholesterol, medications, if you or a loved one has some kind of health challenge you need help with, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please go to my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team off our website, brightsideben.com, also pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and brightsideben.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Ask them about joining the team, the Brightside Ben team, for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, earn thank you checks associated with having your own business, help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. All while working out of your own home, working out of the comfort of your own home without a boss, make your own hours. Enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business. For a one-time $25 fee, call 866-735-2470. They can give you the full scoop. Also, want to remind you to check out our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com. Truth Retinol 5% Gel. If you're dealing with hyperpigmentation, dark spots, blemishes, if you want to prevent acne, or if you want to slow down the aging process, reverse wrinkles, You want to know about our Truth Retinol 5% Gel made with retinol as well as vitamin C in our transdermal delivery matrix, and that is it. Transdermal delivery matrix, retinol, and vitamin C. No preservatives, no fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, or vacuums. Nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want ever in any of our Truth Skin Health products. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, we're back on the bright side. We're talking about cardiovascular health, heart health functioning, how the heart functions and the properties of this amazing structure. Properties of this amazing structure that far transcend its role as a muscular pump, as a mere muscular pump, which is based on 17th and 18th century science. We're even now discovering cutting edge scientists like Dr. Thomas Cowan writing the book Cosmic Heart, Human Heart, Cosmic Heart. We're now discovering that the heart is not even just, it's not even a pump. We're going to be talking about this a little bit more later on, uh, maybe later on this week, about the idea that the heart is not a pump. Although it has a beating action, there's no way the heart can pump all of the uh, um, five gallons of blood through 60,000 miles of blood vessels. That is an amazing, amazing concept. 60,000 miles of blood vessels. We talked about something called coherence, heart coherence, which describes this orderly, 
constructive distribution of force and power that's associated with the beating of the heart. When the heart energy is coherent, the beats follow an orderly and consistent pat, uh, pattern. Interestingly, while the beats follow an orderly and consistent pattern, they do vary. In other words, from beat to beat, you have a, 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 a shorter or longer gap between the beats. That's called heart rate variability. And when we're healthy, we have a heart rate variability. The heart doesn't beat necessarily at the same pace. There's a variability. There's a, a, a longer or shorter rest period between beats as we adjust to our circumstances. As we get older, that variability actually diminishes and the heart rate becomes more consistent. The, the, the space between the beats becomes more consistent with age. So you do need to have a little bit of variability in the spaces between the beats, but the beats themselves have to follow a consistent pattern. Incoherence manifests as fibrillations and arrhythmias, and these can not only cause interruptions of uh, blood flow, but they can also lead to clots and embolisms and strokes, all of which can be life-threatening. And because of the importance of the heartbeats when it comes to synchronizing the energy of other cells, fibrillations and arrhythmias can also cause organ dysfunction and other types of diseases and decreased longevity and ultimately an early demise. This is especially relevant when it comes to stress and stress management. In a paper that from the uh, a journal Applied Psychophysiological Biofeedback from 2015, 72 caregivers of dementia patients who had high stress scores were trained to use breathing techniques, relaxation techniques, positive psychology techniques, all of which increase heart rate coherence. Six months after the training, they were able to generate an appropriate level of heart coherence, appropriate patterns of heart coherence with statistically significant decreases in heart work or heart overload. Researchers concluded that training and techniques of heart coherence and positive psychology, which as I say, basically is relaxation and deep breathing and affirmations, uh, uh, training in techniques of heart coherence had effective results in the stress management of participant caregivers. Once again, demonstrating the importance of relaxation strategies, oxygenation and breathing strategies, as well as positive affirmations. It's not airy-fairy. It's hardcore biochemistry, hardcore science. Relax, lighten up, positive thinking, positive affirmations, optimism, love, peace, forgiveness. I know we talk about nutrition. I know I, I'm a biochemist or I like biochemistry and I follow nutritional protocols, but there's so much more to health and wellness and so much more to healing. And none of this has anything to do with the doctor, obviously. The heart is also related to the brain. It's also connected to the brain. In fact, the heart and the brain are unified into a, a system that you can call a heart-brain system. And in this way, dementia, Alzheimer's disease, other cognitive issues that occur as we get older can be as much a heart problem as they are a brain problem. When was the last time your neurologist told you that? According to Life Extension, quote, there is considerable evidence that Alzheimer's disease or early onset dementia could be considered primarily as a circulatory disorder in which the brain does not receive enough perfusion to function, unquote. Remember, the brain is using up to 25% of the nutrients and the oxygen in the blood, and if the flow of the blood is blocked, deterioration of brain tissue, disease of brain tissue is pretty much inevitable. Secondary to are following clogs, sticky blood. I always say all disease is cell disease and all cell disease follows dirty blood. This simplifies health and wellness dramatically. All disease is about the cell. All cell disease, all disease is cell disease and all cell disease is about dirty, sludgy blood. And unless you're sticking things into the blood through the, vein, through the skin, the only way, the main way, that your blood becomes dirty is from food, from the digestive system. All roads lead to the gut. All roads lead to the intestine in the world of health. The brain also receives information that is linked to the pulses of the heart, the waves of the heart. Like radio waves carry information, carry music and carry news. Heart waves carry information about the state of the body. Heart waves carry information about the external environment. The heart is a type of brain. It's reading the external environment. So heart pulses and heart waves carry information. And while most people believe or learn that the heart responds to the brain, in many ways, the brain is responding to the heart. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. Don't go away. All 
right, we're back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, heart health issues, if you're on statin drugs or any medication you want to wean yourself off, if you have a health challenge you or a loved one is dealing with, you want help, 844-236-6010. We are here for you on the bright side today and every day, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Also, you can purchase longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, so we're talking about the heart. We're talking heart rhythms, incoherence, heart coherence. Uh, coherence is associated with uh, an, an efficient pumping of the heart. Incoherence is associated with an inhibition of various functions, inhibition of brain functions in particular, and, and the stress response as well. The heart is a, a type of brain, as we said. The heart communicates to the brain as much, actually the heart communicates to the brain more than the brain communicates to the heart, even though most of us are conditioned to believe that the brain orders everything else in the body around. It turns out that the heart may be predominant when it comes to signaling, uh, signaling to the brain and signaling to the rest of the body. The heart gets information faster than the brain does, and then it turns in turn sends those sends that information and sends those signals to the rest of the body. That's why heart disease is so critical for the entire body. Not because the heart's pumping blood, but because the heart is informing. It's sending messages to all of the cells of the body, particularly to the brain. This informing information uh, uh, ability, inf informing ability or inf information processing ability of the heart comes from brain cells that are located right in the heart, neurons that live in the heart. Neurons that are very similar in activity to neurons in the emotional center of the brain. This is, when we talk about the, uh, the heart informing the brain, we're really talking about the heart informing the emotional center of the brain. The heart's information wave can have a significant effect on how emotions are processed at the level of the brain. It has a, uh, how the heart beats, the variability between the beats, the coherency, the ordered pattern of the beats can have a significant effect on stress levels, on anxiety, as well as on, on contentment and peace of mind. And this is why biofeedback can be so helpful. We can control our heart rate. And guess what the major way of controlling the heart rate is? Breathing. Yet again, we see the importance of slow, deep, rhythmic breathing. When we breathe slowly, deeply, and rhythmically, somewhere around six breaths per minute is a good place to be, our heart in turn stabilizes. Our heart coherency increases. And this sends a message to the brain that everything's okay. That's why deep breathing will slow things down quickly, will calm things down quickly. If you're dealing with anxiety, you're dealing with insomnia, if you're thinking too much, if you've got jitteriness or a sense of impending doom, a sense of fear, deep, slow, rhythmic breathing via its ability to slow down and, and entrain the heart and put the heart back into a state of coherence calms everything down. This ability that the heart has to learn things, to remember things, to be an information processor, to generate electromagnetic fields that carry information, not only impacts the body that contains the heart, not only impacts us, but it also creates external effects. Remember, the heart is generating a field outside the body, so the same way that heart rate, heart coherency, heart rate variability, the space between the beats, the same way that this is affecting our brain, the same way this is affecting our cells, the same way this is affecting all of our organs, it's affecting everybody else. Else. Because remember, this electromagnetic wave, this information wave, is coming outside the body. Everybody around us is sensitive to this, whether we know it or not. The heart's field, the heart's electrical field, extends some four to six feet outside the body. So it's pretty reasonable to assume that the same kind of effects that modify the activity of our organs, the, the heart's, uh, heart's owner's organs and cells and tissues and structures could easily affect the organs and cells and bodies of other people as well. This is particularly important for mothers and newborn babies or mothers and infants or parents and children for that matter. Heart rate variability, heart coherence can have a dramatic impact on the development of an infant, the development of an embryo or a fetus in the womb, and the, the growth and development of children. Yesterday we talked about an abstract heart, an invisible heart, a metaphysical heart that informs groups of people. And it's not really a heart, of course, it's a metaphysical heart, but it's a source of information that individuals in groups 
whether those groups are nations, countries, cities, teams, organizations of any kind, all of these types of groups are sensitive to information the same way that the cells of the body are sensitive to the information coming from the real heart in the chest of a human body. This means that groups of people have a type of group heart and a group heart field composed of the combination of all of the individual fields generated by all of the individual hearts. That means it, must, it may be possible that all of the electrical waves being generated from the hearts of people in groups may create this kind of group heart that affects all the members of the group the way the heart in our chest affects all of our individual cells. And this, in my opinion, is what is meant in the Bible when we read about the body of Christ. When it says in uh, Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4.11, that we, are all, uh, we all, as individuals, have a role to play in building the body of Christ, in building the meta-body or group bodies. I'm not being religious here. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about this idea that individual humans form a big body the way individual cells form a little body. From Ephesians 4, quote, It was he who gave some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, that is to build up the body of Christ. That's from Ephesians 4. So in the same way, it was he who gave us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip the saints for the building of the body of Christ. It's like having a liver cell and a heart cell and a bone cell and a, a skin cell to build up the human body. We are all individuals in a big body, a meta body, a large body. Just like cells make up a little body, individual humans make up the, the human race body. So we're all streaming out heart waves, heart energy from our chest external to the body. And that means there's a humanity heart field, a human race heart field composed of all of these waves that is impacting each and every one of us as individual human beings. And that means we each have a role to play in whether the human race, the human heart field is healthy or not. Our little anger forms a cancer in the big body. Our little rage, our little lack of forgiveness, our little lack of love forms a disease state in the big meta body. We are all responsible in a way. We all have a, respons a responsibility or a role to play in a way in whether the human race is healthy. Us as individuals have a role to play in whether the human race is healthy. That's why it's so important. One of the reasons why it's so important to pay attention to how you're feeling and the kind of energy you're emanating through your heart field. So just like the physical heart organizes and synchronizes all the cells and, and all the parts of the body into a coherent whole, there may equally be an invisible metaphysical heart that allows groups and people in various groups to function as a coherent whole. And this should not be a stretch as organizations are called organizations. They're made up of organs that are structured in a way that allows them to be functional as part of a system the way our organs are all organized in a way that allows us to be a system. And in the same way as there is a kind of force that allows our organs to organize in a body, it may be the same thing in large organizations and large groups. And this is the conclusion reached by the folks at HeartMath who have scientifically shown that there is a social aspect to the heart's electrical field. In a study of 46 social groups, it was shown that there was a relationship between the functioning of the group and positive emotions like love, excitement, and optimism, and this relationship between positive emotions and healthy functioning of the group is pretty much the same as the relationship between positive emotions and the functioning of our bodies, which is also a type of group, cells, organs, structures, etc. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We're coming back with more good health information and you and your phone calls right after this. On the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. we got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about uh, the longevity products, the longevity business, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, heart, heart health issues, if you're on medication you want to wean yourself off, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we'll get your calls here in just a moment. We do have lines open at 844-236-6010. From... Uh, Let's see here. This is from Fox News. The uh, link between deodorant and breast cancer. Hmm, this is interesting. 
from uh, the, quoting a study from the Journal of Applied Toxicology, researchers took four samples of breast tissue from 40 women who had cancer, and they found something very interesting. After analyzing the tissue, they found preservatives in the breast tissue, specifically preservatives called parabens. Now, this is uh, this this was uh, from from Fox News uh, just last week, but we've known about this for years. I first read about parabens in breast cancer tissue when I was in pharmacy school 30 years ago, and I hated working with parabens. Most people these days know that parabens are are nasty preservatives. They're food preservatives, actually, and they're also in cosmetics. But it's not just parabens that's a problem. Sometimes marketing companies and skin skin product companies will say, oh, we don't use any parabens, but they use other nasty preservatives. And indeed, it's not just the parabens that are a problem. Although parabens do act like the hormone estrogen. They're said to be xenoestrogens or foreign estrogens, and they can affect reproductive tissue, breast tissue, cervical tissue, uterine tissue ovarian tissue and they can be linked to breast cancer and they know they've known now as I say for decades that that breast cancer tumors uh, does have measurable amounts of parabens I've always said you can't it, it, it's not reasonable to believe that you can rub these toxic chemicals on your body daily for months and years and decades and not expect to have a problem parabens not only are toxic but they enter into the blood they're fat soluble they get in through the skin now it's true, there's not a lot of parabens in skincare products. They use very tiny concentrations, but it's the chronic application that you, where you run into a problem. That's why I don't use any preservatives in my True Skin Health products. And it doesn't have to be parabens that are a problem. All preservatives are going to present some kind of health challenge. And speaking of preservatives and health challenges, from the journal Nature Communication, Study shows how food preservatives may disrupt human hormones and promote obesity. Chemicals in breakfast cereals and other everyday products can make you obese. Obesity has a lot to do with toxicity. Obesity is partially related, or or fat storage, fat deposition, is partially related to the body's attempt to sequester poisons. The body stores poisons in fats. And so obesity may be related to excess ingestion of things like food preservatives and other food additives. All right, one more here. This is kind of interesting. Anemia linked to increased risk of dementia from the uh, American Academy of uh, of Neurology. This was from the online issue of Neurology. Anemia, low levels of red blood cells may increase the risk of dementia. This is what we were talking about earlier, how there's a major connection between the circulatory system, between the heart, the blood vessels, how well the heart is working, how well the blood is being circulated through the body, and brain health issues. As we get older and our blood becomes more sludgy and our blood becomes more dirty, it becomes more difficult for the heart, for the brain to get what it needs from the blood. And under those conditions, it's much more likely that brain tissue will deteriorate and this can show up as dementia. And this can also show up as Parkinson's disease. And this can show up as all kinds of brain health issues. And it it shouldn't be a surprise. It's obvious. If an organ is not perfused, that is, if it doesn't get the blood supply it needs, it's not going to be nourished. It's not going to be detoxified. It's not going to be oxygenated. And there we have the three points on Uh, The three uh, major causes of inflammation, suffocation, starvation, and toxification, following secondary to dirty blood, which itself follows and is secondary to the triangle of disease. The triangle of disease leads to starvation, suffocation, and toxification, then inflammation, then more starvation, suffocation, and toxification, then more inflammation and disease. This is why you backtrack Always, no matter what your diagnosis is, your diagnosis doesn't matter. No matter what your diagnosis is, you backtrack to the triangle. The digestive system, the blood sugar system, and the adrenal thyroid complex. You relax the body, you stabilize the blood sugar, lower insulin levels, and work on digestive health. It's as simple as that. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Let us go to... Wesley in Idaho, who always has something good to say. What's up, Wes? How you doing, man? Good morning, Ben. Uh, good morning. Got a book here, Minerals for the Genetic Code by Charles Walter. And Great book. Says, Love the book. Now, uh, for a complete protein synthesis, you need hydrogen, uh, sulfur, and yttrium. And, and what? What is the last thing? Yttrium. Is yttrium. I, I want to say yttrium. It's oh, y- yttrium. Yes. Y- y- yeah, yttrium. Y-T-T-R-I-U-M. 
U-M. Uh, yes, uh, Ethereum. What, now, what does uh, he say about Ethereum? You need Ethereum to process protein? It says here, for complete protein synthesis, you need all three of these, hydrogen, sulfur, and yttrium is Are we have. And it's, let me spell it so I make sure you're talking right. Y-T-T-E-R-B-I-U-M, ytterbium? R-I-U-M, Y-T-T-R-I-U-M, ytterbium. Huh. That's, that's the way uh, YouTube had it uh, four or five times different people pronouncing it. You know, I want to say uh, yet. Yet trim, you know, put an E in there. But anyway, uh, further in the book, it says here, Lou Gehrig's disease, Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's, uh, multiple sclerosis, and Parkinson's disease are all related to yttrium deficiency. Hmm. Well, uh, I, I, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not denying that. I, ne I never heard of it. De deficiencies cause disease. I don't know. I'd like to see how he's linking, uh, how he's making that association, where he gets that from. And I do like the book. The book is a very interesting, shows a very interest interesting relationship between minerals from the soil and genetics. And it's really kind of cool. I think it came out, it came out a long time ago. Uh, and he's got some very good information in there. When did it come out? Do you have it there? Uh, I think it was 2002. Oh, okay. I thought it came out before sure. that. Now, here's another reference to uh, a Dr. Chaim Horowitz experimented with it. He put it into test animals, and they had a lifetime three times their normal lifespan. Now, I want you to spell that real slowly one time for me. Y-T-T-R-I. U M. The, okay. You know, the last part is common. You know, it's a chemical. Yeah, reum is a chemical suffix. That's right. I know what ytterbium is, but I, don't, I can't say I know what that is. Way West, well, I got a bunch of calls. I got to get to. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it. Uh, the book is called Minerals for the Genetic Code for the listeners. Thank here, you, Wes. Here's, a, here's another book you might yeah. be interested Biochemistry, uh, Scandium and Yttrium by Dr. Chaim Horowitz. Horowitz. I, I will take I will take that under advisement. Thank you so much, Wes. Appreciate it. Have a have a good day, man. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We'll take a commercial break and come back with more good health information on the bright side on the Genesis Communication Network. Back on the bright side, farm spent here. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. Let's go to Mary in Michigan. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Ben. And how are you this morning? I'm doing well. Thanks for calling. What's up? Well, I called you um, a week or so ago. Told you I was scheduled for um, cataract surgery, and uh -huh. I've been trying to find out what the pre-op is. But the main reason I'm calling you today is they want me to take. A product called Smart Drops for my eyes, pre and post operative. Okay, is it and a prescription? I it's don't a prescription? think I want to take it. It's yeah, a prescription? it's it's one percent. It's called Smart Drops. It's one percent uh, prednisone. Okay. Point five percent moxifloxacin. Okay. And point four percent keto. Conazole. Rolac. Oh, Rolac. Okay, those are all anti-inflammatories. And the idea being yeah. that after you have surgery, you're going to have a major, you're going to have, in the eye especially, you're going to have lots of inflammation. They want to keep that inflammation down. Uh, you know, a surgical procedure is, it's traumatic for the body. The body freaks right. out. When you have a surgical procedure, right. the body's wisdom, the body has this inherent intelligence. And, and the body doesn't know you've been in surgery. It thinks you've just been wounded. So it, right. it mobilizes to protect you from the womb and the inflammatory process, as we've said so many times, is a defensive protective response. 
So what you got to do if you're going to have surgery is you've got to bypass that protective response because the inflammation itself can be problematic and slow down the healing. Mm -hmm. So they want to pre uh, prophylactically or, or preemptively ahead of time hit you with anti-inflammatories so you don't inflame or at least you inflame less after you have your surgical procedure. Cataracts are, you know, they do them somewhat routinely these days, but it's still a serious surgical procedure. I would personally be using the drops if it was me. Um, there's really no option. There's no alternatives to the drops or to prednisone in the eye. I mean, there's no natural anti-inflammatories that you can use that compare to uh, ketoprolac or or uh, or uh, uh, prednisone. So you really don't have many op much options there. I, I would not be messing around. I mean, you're about to have a very important surgical procedure. What you can do, though, which would be really helpful for you to do, is load up mm -hmm. on nutrients, especially vitamin E, zinc, vitamin C. I would also be using NAC, NAC, which we've talked about before, MSM sulfur, the B-complex, your omega-3 fats, get on the Healthy Star Pack, stay on it, take extra EFAs. If you have any digestive health issues, make absolutely sure you're eating pristinely, at least for a week. I know it's hard to sometimes discipline ourselves not to eat the wrong foods, but at least for this week or the next couple of weeks, you got to be really pristine with your diet. And uh, mm -hmm, I would okay. be avoiding sugar like the plague. I'd be avoiding it as oh, best as possible. Okay. But good for you. Okay. So be extra vigilant even, about even, sugars. Even fruit, though? Even I, wouldn't, fruit? I would stay away from it personally. I mean, it's, okay. not as bad as, it's not as bad as, you know, candy bars, of course. Okay. But, but I would okay. stay away from it. There's no, there's no need for fruit. Uh, vegetables, okay. I'd be eating, uh, eating lots of veggies and making sure you're doing veggie juices, bone soup. Anything you could do to build, uh, reduce inflammation from a nutritional standpoint and to build tissue from a nutritional standpoint will be in your interest. You know, you don't think about it, but the eye is loaded with connective tissue. In fact, the eyeball itself is largely made up of hyaluronic acid. So making sure you're using HA supplements, hyaluronic acid supplements, that might be helpful for you. Cartilage supplements, glucosamine, the glucogel caps, gelatin, bone soup, anything you could do to help build the body via nutrition and reduce inflammation via nutrition is going to be in your health interest. Now, one last caveat, sometimes uh, ophthalmologists and eye surgeons will tell you not to use vitamin E and actually, they'll tell you not to use vitamin C uh, pre and post surgery, especially if you're having LASIK surgery. Uh, you really want to have a discussion with your doctor about that because uh, I don't agree with them. And you know, you you want to how much E and C would you say? 400 IU a day two, on, on the E, 2,000 2,000 milligrams a day on the vitamin C. But run it by your physician. You know, when you're in, when he's cutting you and he's doing a surgical procedure, you got to give him the respect of letting him know what you're doing. It's really true about all doctor-patient interactions when you're being cared for. But I, I'm not a friend of the medical model. I'll make no mistake about it. I know you know that. But right, when you're being right. cared for by a physician, it's just a matter of respect to tell him what you're up to. Not that you have to listen to what he's saying, but you just want to inform him of what you're up to mm -hmm. as far as nutritional supplementation mm -hmm. goes. And especially if you're uh, not going to be using the prescription medicine, uh, you definitely want to let him know that. He has the right to know that if he's going to be taking care of you. All right, Mary, i got to motivate here. Anything else you want to ask? You. Okay, thank you. Good luck. Right, no, God that, bless that you. That was good. Thank you. Appreciate okay, take it. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. All right, let's go to, uh, do, 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 let us go to Carl, the Truth Raider in Oregon. Good morning, Carl. What's hey, up, man. buddy? Hey, buddy. What's going on, man? Well, I just want to find out what you got you know, as far as information is concerned in the exciting world of uh, modern-day futuristic uh, type of uh, medical uh, innovations, yeah. such as what you were talking about uh, a couple, of year, couple, three years ago. You were touching on it for a few shows about the uh, technologies with stem cell research, 3D printing. 3D printing okay. is a big one. Yeah. Detection, smartphones, uh, wearable technology that can detect... Uh, what your blood, uh, what, what your heart rate is like, what your blood pressure is like, what, even what your blood sugar is like. They have, uh, they're working on. It. They may already have a wearable technology, like a, a, a wristband that you might wear, a necklace that you might wear, that will actually read what's in your blood. Doctors love this because then they could tell uh, whether you're taking your drugs or not. They may even have technology that goes inside your body that can tell whether you're taking your medication or not. Personally, that sounds like the camel's nose under the tent, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I, don't want any, I don't want anybody going into my blood remotely, no less. You know, it's right. bad enough when they go into your blood if you get a DUI or, some, or if they suspect you of DUI or, or using, you know, drugs or something, they'll go into your blood. That's bad enough. But what about remote technology that allows people to sense your blood remotely? 
How you like that? What does that feel like, folks? <laughs> you know? Not good. And then off and right, not good. But the 3D printing thing, that kind of blows me away. You know, they're 3D printing kidneys now and 3D printing skin now and 3D yeah. printing medication now. And I did a, a radio program about um, eight years ago. Where, when I first heard about 3D printing, it was about eight years ago. And I, I kind of didn't quite understand it. And then I started reading about it and I started talking about it on the radio. And people were, nobody understood what it was. This was just a mere eight years ago. Today, you go to the bookstore, and you can get magazines on 3D printing, where, you, where they teach you how to 3D print toys and process. You can 3D print a house. You can 3D print cars. You can 3D print the, the machinery and, the, the, and the, the widgets for making anything these days. And the fact that you can 3D print biological, biological tissue is absolutely mind-blowing. I personally believe that, that's the biggest thing that's coming around the pike. Artificial intelligence is also going to be big. You know, uh, the first use for robots, you know what it's going to be? For working with old people in nursing homes. Those are going to be the first, wow. that's going to be the first, like, humanoid-like robots. There's a thing on Ted. You ever watch Ted? Ted uh, you know those Ted videos? Yeah, Ted conferences. Yeah. yeah, the Ted conferences. I was watching a Ted conference where they had a dog, a 3D dog. Uh, not a 3D dog, but a, a robot dog. Uh, <laughs> and it was amazing because when... When a, a robot has legs and a head and turns its head certain ways and has eyes, even though you know it's a robot, you can see it's a robot, there's something about our brain that wants to think that it's alive. If it just has the ability to move and has kind of the rough approximate shape of a living creature, there's something about our brain that makes us think the robot's alive. And that's when you can actually see the gears and the, and the metal and the parts of the dog, at least on this TED video. And I was, found myself thinking the thing was cute. But imagine when robots have facial expressions and they have eyes and they can create them so they look humanoid-like. It's going to be very hard and progressively harder and harder to distinguish between something that's alive and something that's robotic. And they're actually now uh, bioethicists, who are people who study the ethics of bio biology, uh, they are now studying whether robots should have rights or not. And how the, how they how we're going to treat robots once they're around if we're going to give them rights now obviously we're 100 200 years away from that but they're beginning to explore the possibility of robot rights shades of Isaac Asimov I don't know if you saw that movie I Robot yeah anyway it's a brave new world Carl the Truth Raider and you and I probably aren't going to be here to see see a lot of it but it's on the way make no mistake about it no, I'd like all right, I'm going to get one more call in Carl if I can. Have a beautiful oh, day. Right. I'm glad you called. Thanks, buddy. All right. So last word for John, the underwear guy. Good morning, John. Hey, good morning. Good morning, sir. Okay. I'm going to make it quick. Yes, I'm sir. I'm parked out here in Death Valley. I'm okay. I'm drinking a smoothie, and I'm thinking about nuts. And I'm out here on the road. Um, I, I, when I get the munchies, I've kind of uh, turned to nuts. My nuts okay. are almonds. Okay. Uh, just for general munchies, walnuts to put my smoothies, and Brazil nuts for the selenium. Those, those are three um, awesome nuts. Almonds sometimes have a, well, nuts can be a problem for some folks, but if you can eat nuts, uh, they got some a lot of nutritional value. The one knock on nuts, aside from the fact that they're allergenic for some folks, is the oils oxidize when they're roasted. So you want to kind of keep your nuts ro uh, uh, unroasted and fresh if possible. John, the underwear guy, I'm glad you called, but we're out of time, buddy. So give us a call back tomorrow if you got anything else to say about. Hey. about Nuts. All right, thanks. There's Have a beautiful always day. another day. Thank you. All right, buddy. Take care, man. And also, nuts are a great source of fiber. Don't forget that. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thank you so much for listening to The Bright Side, friends. Have yourselves a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. Don't forget to check out my website, truthtreatments.com, for super high-end premium connoisseur skin health products, truthtreatments.com. We will talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.